I'm Ruth Davis and I have been carving for about 20 years. I've taught classes for about 15 years and today in this DVD we're going to teach you to take a blank piece of basswood like this and turn it into a beautiful farm scene like this. Everyone relates to a farm scene. This is my most popular wood carving. Uh, you can personalize it by putting your name or you can, if you're giving it as a gift, you can put the recipient's name. And uh, the carving is fun, it's relaxing, you'll love it, and let's get going. We're going to start with a pattern. Uh, patterns are very easy to learn from because it tells you exactly how to carve. It gives you lines to follow with your blades rather than just starting out freeform carving. We're going to begin with the stop cut blade. This is the number 24 blade tightened into the red handle. This blade, as I mentioned before, we're going to be using to trace over all of our lines again. But once we have this stop cut line cut around everything, we're going to go back and we're going to use the chisel with the beveled edge down. And now you'll see why we call this a stop cut line. We're going to be chiseling right along that line and kind of chiseling and coming around. Now once again you want to be aware of where the second hand is. You, uh, I had mine in a bad spot right there. You want to keep it out of the line of fire of your blade. Now basically this is what we're doing through the whole carving. We're stop cutting and we're chiseling. We're stop cutting again and we're chiseling again until we get it the depth and the width that we want. Okay, now we have our carving completely carved. We're going to do some sanding. Now, I like to sand quite a bit. I like to round everything off. I like to have a smooth transition, but if you want to keep yours a little more rustic looking, that's fine. There's no right or wrong. So what I do is I take a piece of fine sandpaper, fold it in half, lay it right in the groove, and just sand back and forth. Do as much as possible with the grain. And when you're all done sanding, you're going to sand the whole thing with the grain. You want to get all marks off of it, handprints, fingerprints, if you've spilled something on it. Everything has to come off the surface so that your paint and your stain will look nice. Okay, now that we have our carving all carved, sanded, we're ready to paint. Now I like to work with eight colors. I like to mix my own paint. And you can use just craft paint that you can find at any craft store. Uh, eight colors. If you want to go to a little bit better quality, you can go to your Liquitex acrylic paints. But I like to work with just the eight acrylic paints. The first thing we're going to paint is the tree. I'm going to mix yellow and black to get the green that I want for the tree. But the secret to the beautiful paint is that it is very thin. We want it almost the consistency of water. So now we're starting to Get enough water that we can mix it up. See how that's turning green? Maybe a little too much black in there even. It's kind of a dark green. But let's add a little more water and see what we come up with. I would say we maybe, well, let's put a little bit on and see how we look for color. You know, once again, there's no right and wrong. You can make your green however you would like it. Well, that's pretty good green. So let's just go ahead. Painting these wood carvings is almost like if you remember as a kid coloring in a coloring book and you want to stay in the lines. That's basically what it is. You're just going to stay in the lines of your 
of your carving here. And if you should happen to get some, you know, up in where you don't want it, don't worry about it. Just let it dry and it'll sand right off when it's dry. Okay, now we have our carving completely painted. And this is what it looks like when it's painted and not stained. Almost like a color book picture that you've painted red, green, brown, very simple painting. The first thing we're going to do is make our own stain. And you are going to want to purchase, either at a hardware store, craft store, wherever, completely odorless paint thinner. And into that odorless paint thinner, we are going to add burnt umber oil paint. We are going to just literally slop the paint on. It, it has to go down into, I'm sorry, the stain. It has to go down into all of the grooves. All of those little stem cuts that you made and all of the chisel cuts you made around the rocks and in between the tree branches. You want the stain to just cover everything. Your beautiful sky that you painted. We're going to stain it now. So we'll just set this aside and we'll let it sit for a few minutes. I've got rags. You want to cut up some soft rags. These are old dish towels. You could use anything as long as it's cotton. You don't want to use terry cloth because that kind of shreds and gets down into all the cuts. But I like to wipe off the sky first. We don't want that to get too terribly dark. But oh, clouds look nice. Okay, after you have stained, shaded, and haloed your wood piece, finished off all the edges all the way around, of course the back is stained, we're ready to do our varnishing. Okay, so one coat of varnish. This is what it consists of. There you have it. You're finished with your carving creation. Put a hanger on the back and hang it on your wall or give it as a gift. Everyone loves these.